Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Kevin. This is Peznots. We talk about games, tech, random things, and all of the things. So, welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about how I use my legacy camera, the T4i, to set up my scene, which you are seeing right now. The Canon T4i is an old camera, and the conventional wisdom is that you cannot stream with this Canon T4i because the live view mode does not support a clean HDMI output and it will shut off after 30 minutes. Well, I have another video, which I will link here, which shows how you can make it so that the live view mode does not turn off after 30 minutes and you can get a clean HDMI signal. However, there's some steps that you still have to do in order to get your stream working as you would expect every time. And in this video, I'm going to talk about what I do and how I set up my stream so that I can use my Canon T4i camera as a webcam. Now, specifically, we're talking about streaming. However, you could actually do this for pretty much anything. The Canon T4i camera can be used as a standard webcam. So if you just want to look fantastic on Zoom, or Google Meet, you can do that too. All you have to do is pretty much what I do. So if it's your first time here, I say welcome. If you are a reoccurring user to the Requiem, say welcome also. Everybody's welcome. But anyways, let's get into the video. It's going to be a quick one. In this quick video, I'm going to show you how I set up my video from the camera to OBS from start to finish. I'm going to show you all of the settings I use and applications I use. So here's my local desktop. I actually am going to kill my camera connection so that we can start it up from start to finish. All right, my camera is now killed. The very first thing I do is start the EOS utility. This will actually establish a connection to the camera over USB. And then I click camera settings slash remote shooting. What this allows me to do is have rapid access to shutter speed, f-stop, ISO, um, you know, picture style, white balance, white shift, detail, you know, what I want to be, uh, my movie recording settings to be, which is actually has an effect on the live view output and everything else. Once I'm ready to go, I click live view shoot. This will open up the camera and then allow me to focus on myself as necessary. You know, I can focus on whatever I want on this, on that, on me. But what's neat about this, and I, I just leave the EOS utility up for the entire time of my, my stream. And what's neat about this is that via this USB connection, I can rapidly refocus as necessary. So if I, you know, move in and out of the focal plane I can cue this up, double click on my face, it refocuses and I'm off and running to the races. This makes it so that the camera isn't automatically focusing, which is is useful, right? Because if you move around a lot like I do, I move around a lot. But if you move around a lot, uh, the camera will be constantly focusing in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And that's really disturbing for your your, your viewing public, your end users. So I turn off autofocus. However, I do keep the ability to manually focus turned on, right? So the lens is enabled with my focus feature and via the application, I can queue up the live mode, double click my face and it focuses. It also makes sure that all of this mess, you know, like these uh, overlays that uh, Canon produces, aren't actually a part of my scene. As you can see, the focus square is tracking my face, but that's not a part of my scene. So now that I have the camera open and let's talk about the settings real quick, right? These are my settings. Fortunately, I can't enlarge this so you can see it better, but I'll zoom in, in, the, in <laughs> via the magic of editing. We'll zoom in here. So these are my settings. I have a 160 shutter speed. My lens is capable of f2.8 and I have an 800 ISO. It would be great if I could do a 400 ISO, but in order to do that, I would need to set my shutter speed to 
probably around 30. The reason I say it would be great to do this is because a 400 ISO means that the picture quality is going to be a lot less noisy. In my case, due to my lighting settings, I have to set the shutter speed to 30 to support this 400 ISO. Tinker with these settings based on what you like and what you want. For the video recording, I have that set to 1920 by 1080 with 29.97 frames per second. Now this is important because if I change this to be 1280 by 720, it's going to impact the picture for the live view. While it didn't impact my smaller camera because that's cropped, it will impact my chatting camera. This one is, uh, as you can see, the blur is, is now there, right? Because I'm zoomed in and the frames per second is too low. Now, if I go back to my chatting camera, it's really not a big deal because I'm smaller. So in order to keep this into a supported setting and something that you know I actually want to work, I do 1920 by 1080, but uh, the 29 frames per second. And then that fixes it and that makes sure everything continues to work. There's no, no issue, no problem, nothing. If you do make changes on this setting while live, you are going to need to restart your camera in order to not necessarily restart, but uh, re-enable the live view mode. Now, what's cool is that you can do that by just closing the application. That disables the live view mode. If I reopen the application, click on camera settings and utility, remote shooting, live view shoot, camera's back online. So if you do make changes, Right. So let's go back to our chatting window so you can see my hand move around. You don't see that jitter anymore. So if you do make changes to some of those other settings, you are going to have to restart the live view or the live view mode, the live view shoot, um, which can be done in the application by simply closing. it. To enable all this really cool stuff, all you have to do is connect two cables connected to the camera at all times. One is the USB cable, which is used for control. Two is the HDMI cable, which is used for video out. So if you take a look at my local desktop here, my OBS settings come in as a single camera input. That single camera input, in my case, is the Live Gamer Duo. Live Gamer Duo, port two, which is my camera input. As you can see here, there are little black bars that show up on screen. And that's because the, this is what the Canon T4i does, right? This is a camera that's old, doesn't have a clean HDMI output natively without using custom firmware. And so in order to get the widest shot, I have set the live view mode to 16 by 10, but it does have these little black bars on it. So the HDMI output that's coming out of the camera is not actually 1080p. It's more like 1050p. So. This is what you get with the camera. So in order to, to account for these, all you have to do is crop the image out, right? But I just wanted to point out, these are the black bars you see from the HDMI output on the camera. Pretty simple to take care of, but something you have to take care of nonetheless. Anyways, yeah, Live Gamer Duo. This is my video out from the camera into my computer. The USB cable, all it does is take care of control which is what I have here. So I hope this has been useful. I hope that you've been able to take a look at my settings, figure out how I set up my scene and how I get my snarling face in front of all of y'all. If you have any questions, let me know. Happy to answer any of them here in YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, on stream. It doesn't matter. Hit me up. Let me know. Happy to answer any questions I can. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps. I greatly appreciate it. If you did not, the other button works. As always, go forth, be brilliant, and I will see you in the next one.